be able to know the chosen path that He wants for us because He's calling us. Like you calling your children. If you're calling your children and now they're adult, you try to reach them. You can't reach them anymore with discipline. You can't ground them. You can't do anything else. You can only give them a call and say, Sweetie, I'm concerned for you. I want to be able to share my heart with you. Would you listen? And if you doesn't listen, you can't do anything. You can only pray and hope that God will intervene for you. So the God is the same way to us. He's calling each and one of us to be responsive to His Word. And then when we obey His Word and find His Word to obey and apply it to our lives. So that we might know Him to be a Father, not just Creator. Some great power somewhere there. And, you know, He really doesn't care for me. He wants to be your Father. And be able to guide you every step of the way. Every second. Just like you want to take care of your baby when she is a three months year old and do everything for her or for him, same way God wants to do it for you, no matter how old you are. Because without him, you can do nothing. He giving him us, giving us every heartbeat and, and bread. So, if you read the chapter two, verse two that we put in an outline, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Many of us maybe go to, to the motion. As an athlete, you never can accomplish anything if you're putting all of your heart there. you got to put your hard work and training and put your body to training very hard in order to be able to have every, any result for yourself personally. And God is really after our hearts. Because when we seek for Him and search for Him daily, then He knows that when He responding to us and be able to teach Him to us, we will be very attentive to Him and listen and be obedient. But if, you go, if we don't give him our hearts, if we just go to the motion and showing the church here and there and acknowledging here and there, imagine your marriage, your relationship with a child or a family, that you really want to be acknowledge somebody here and there, maybe once a month, once a week, want to talk to somebody maybe every two months. What kind of relationship is that going to be? You guys are going to be strangers to each other. And God says the same way, when you start seeking me, seek me with all of your heart and all of your soul, and then you find me, because I didn't put the second part of the verse, and you will be found by you. You will be find me. And the third verse, verse says there in your seminar, you will see her as silver. Now in, in the Proverbs, when you talk about a her, you talk about a God's wisdom and God's word. You need to put it in the context. He says, you will seek for me as a, as a silver and search for her as a hidden treasure. Then you will understand righteousness and justice. Equity and good path. He says, when we see God with all of our hearts, and we do that persistently. You know, persistent is something you do daily. Not just here and there. And you have been totally committed, totally sold out. He says, then you're going to understand righteousness, judgment. Then start things going to make sense to you. You're going to start understand what is God up to? What He want to teach you? Why did He want you to change your path? Your way of reasoning, thinking, the way you were used to playing and Pursuing certain goal in your life. He's going to start enlightening you in a way that you'll never be able to understand it. Something like, if somebody telling you there is a hidden hundred million dollars in your back backyard. And he says, it is a hundred million dollars there. What would you do? He says, go ahead and go find it. When you find it, it's yours. What would your action be? If you have common sense and, and apply, apply logic. You will do anything you can. To take and find that money if somebody telling you. Okay, we're going to discover later in life the money will not give you joy and happiness. It's going to make you feel comfortable, give you more choices. But you will still have the inspiration to find it. And you will be very persistent. And it's the same way God want to teach us. He says, my money, my word is more valuable than gold and silver. And interesting things, not many people agree with that. They didn't come to that understanding. And doesn't really confirm to them that that's true. Because God, when He created he a heaven and earth and every one of us, do you know He created gold and silver and diamonds? Where did He put that? Where did He put it? You can't find it in the store, obviously, before it's a display in the store. Where is the gold, diamond, and silver? Hidden. Hidden, and He, he hid him for a purpose. He didn't scatter Him on the surface of the earth. And he says, just go find it easily and find it. He says, I want you to pursue for riches because he knows our creatures, we will pursue the riches to be able to feel our gratification materialistically. So he hid there and he says, now you're going to have to dig down and search for and be persistent. How many people dig and never find it and gave up? Somebody else come later in the same spot. <laughs> Bang, he hit it. He says, what did I do? I gave up. <laughs> of course you gave up because you were not persistent. But then he says, my word. Is more valuable than gold and silver. So he says, my wisdom, 
My wisdom, you're going to really choose the fi- you really find the really purpose of life, who I am. And then you're going to be able to know why did I create you and made you and be able to walk with me in this world, not alone. You will be a presence knowing that God is with you, your Father who loves you more than anybody else. And you're not going to have a fear because you're going to see the God all-powerful, almighty who holding the universe in the palm of his hands. Certainly can help you, no matter what problem you have. But when we don't know God in that such a way, because we don't spend time directly and not knowing Him personally, when we have a problem in our lives, our problem becomes an overwhelming wave of 300 feet over us, and we say, watch out, we're done. Uh, we have no hope. And then we see God very little in distance. And God says, I want you to reverse your mind of thinking. Yes. To see me all-powerful. All and your problem is insignificant. I actually allowed you to maybe sometime have a problem. So I can show you the, my power and miracle. I bring the Jew, Israelites people in front of the Red Sea. Not just because I got lost and my GPS didn't work. <laughs> and I was not surprised. And God, oh boy, the the Egyptians want to kill the Israelites. Oh, they're going to blame on me. No, he allowed it to happen. He knows exactly what's going on because, aha, uh-huh, I got you right there where I want you. Now watch my power. When you look up to me, they will start crying out and you open the Red Sea. So a lot of times, he want to do the same thing for you and me because the challenging time that you're going to face in this world because we're living in an evil world. You will face it. He says there is no question if every one of us going to face challenging time. It's only opportunity to see what your father, your creator can do for you. To see he does care. He didn't leave you alone. He didn't walk away from you because he know that you are just like a sheep. And me, not you. I'm talking to myself as well. That we are just like a sheep. He, Jesus says, you are the sheep. You need a shepherd. And if you ever see the sheep being in a wilderness and drift away from the shepherd, what happened to the sheep? There's no way to survive it. There is a wolves there. There are animals. There is a real world. There is a wickedness. And Jesus giving us illustration, just like that sheep who is very dumb in a sense and understanding, just following the trail where he's going to eat. That's all he cared. Sheep will just go where the green is. Doesn't even care if the wolf is over there hiding. Doesn't even have care and understanding. He can't even smell that. The danger may be ahead of it like some other creatures. And just go on, just like we. Sometimes we, we just worry about it today. We're going to get a job, how much, that's all important. But we don't put any emphasis in internal things. We're living just like a sheep for today. And God says there is a greater picture, a greater plan than I have for you. Not only that I give you life here, but I want your life to make a significant difference for eternity, for you personally. Because the way you live, your eternity is going to be in stake. Either you're going to spend eternity with Him or without Him. That's the number one thing, the most important thing to God. So nobody left without Him living in eternity in a place that is not like earth. We think the earth is a challenging place. Wait till you see the hell. What is the heaven like? Hell like? And Jesus spoke ten times more in hell than heaven. Why? Because He saw somebody like you will see your neighbor and his house on a fire. And everybody's sleeping. And you as a good neighbor, what would you do to your neighbor? You will run and do anything you can. Knock, broke the window, want to shake up. Wake him up and says, you are in danger. Your life is in danger. That's what the Jesus came to us and, and be able to expect more on the dangers of our life. Because our life, if we're not having set eyes on eternity, we're going to set yourself in a destiny to be able to be separated from God. And God does not want us to do it. At the same time, if you're living for God, He has a great plan for your life to prosper, as this verse just stated. And prosperity doesn't come quickly. Farmer have to sow the seed. And the farmer have to go to some challenging waiting time. He doesn't know if it's going to rain, if it's going to be cold. He needs to totally rely on God. And this will come up and be able to be blessed. And blessings come over the hard work and persistence and trust in God that He will be always there and showing that what He's able to do. So as His desire for us to seek Him with all of our heart, He also giving us illustration. How many people you know if somebody brings before them a billion dollars and says, do you want a billion dollars or you want my wisdom and live for me? How many people would choose first instead of a second? Most, Most all of them. Because the Bible says we're all spiritually blind. We don't need understand the significance. So why would he encouraging us? What is the step to be able to seek God? What is important that it make difference in my life for men who grew up in communist country, never knew God, never cared for God? I always acknowledged that there is God there, but I didn't want to be involved in my life.